and we are live hey what's up team this is eddie gray uh you know we're back at it in the mix with eddie gray and i'm stoked happy to be here happy to be uh in the flesh and ready so this is the way i want to start this call i'm currently reading all you need is ears by george martin if you guys don't know who this gentleman is, he's basically responsible for for what we do. So if you're a composer, a producer in the modern era, then essentially you have this man to, to think. And so I want to just read uh, a little bit here off of page 77. George Martin says, uh, It shouldn't be expected that people are necessarily doing what they appear to be doing on records. That's not to say that I think we can replace the genius of the great performer. The human quality is something for which we should always strive. And I would be very sad if we ever lost it. But technically, we can help. Um, it goes on here to talk about uh, the people have ideas about what is ethical and recording and what is not, which they don't really think out properly. And then he gives a really great example of uh, a time that Paul McCartney, which you didn't know that he produced the Beatles, he was like the fifth Beatle. Uh, Paul McCartney to dub in a note on a record, and he said he didn't want to because he thought it was cheating. And I told him, we've all been cheating all the time, and he did it. So if you haven't checked out this great autobiography, I highly recommend it. Uh, fantastic read. And um, it gives you a, you know an inside scope into what we are and what we do. This is a new job. This is a new role in the 21st century and they're you know the 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 rules are open the doors are open anything is possible so the goal today is to go over some of the the projects that i'm working on i'm currently producing a rap artist that's like my side hustle uh, i've got a great single coming out in the next couple of weeks by a great artist named caden only and we're releasing a really great uh joint and then so that's one thing i do right and then uh for most of you you know me as head composer, producer, uh, Emmy award-winning show, Born This Way. I was the head composer on that. The Kim Kardashian West Justice Project documentary. I was the head composer on that. And so I want to show you some of the stuff that I'm doing in the world of composition as well. We currently have a 45-day challenge that I myself and a couple of the members of hfmusicacademy.com have taken on and we're working on you know, producing as much content as much music as possible so we can distribute the music amongst the world publishers media content etc so with that being said um, this will be a bit more of a scattered session i'm going to show you just a whole bunch of stuff i'm probably going to record guitars we'll see how it goes all right so that being said if you have any uh questions comments hit me in the chat and we will go from there all right uh so let me bring this up here let me move my screens all right. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, give you a, a bird's eye view into this track. You know, what's what's going on with it and, and kind of where it needs some help. So um, let's play this from the top. Yeah. <laughs> 
get the point. Um, this song, it, it's working. Um, you might have seen my the the last YouTube video I did. It, it was essentially on how to take a loop and how to turn it into a proper beat. So check that out if you're wondering how I constructed this. I originally started with this uh, loop called Watchful Eye. And then after that, I just customized my own drum settings and just added, you know, a bunch of great stuff over it. So take a listen. All right, great. So that on top of a really great 808 line, it really wasn't that hard, guys. It wasn't that hard to make this work. Listen. Okay, so then of course you got to put the uh, the gang or chant vocals here. Check it out. You know what? I, I want to share something with you that that you know, prior to this moment, I, I didn't really know. Uh, but you know, when I when I didn't have the reverb instantiated on the the channel strip on the group itself of the gang vocals, the uh, the the chant vocals are really loud. They were really in my face. You know, I often talk about on hfmusicacademy.com um, in our mixing seminars how you can think about mixing like front to back, you know, like something is very close to you and then maybe something is away. So something very close to you is like a level zero or a level one, right? And the further you go back in terms of placement, you start to increase that number. So three, five, seven, you know, 13, 18, you know. And so when you uh, when you add a little bit of reverb, it, it, it helps something move further back into the foreground. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And I want you to listen to how how dry this sounds. OK, and then I'll instantiate the reverb and you can see how it goes from being pretty close to your face to going far away. Check it out. <laughs> So for me, that was a game changer. I usually would uh, would send reverb, but I wouldn't instantiate it on the group itself. And I've always loved this RC48 by Softube, uh, Native Instruments, I believe, distributes it. And it worked really well, so I was stoked about that. But really what makes this song is it's kind of, uh, you know, nod to the, the French world. Uh, this rapper that I'm working with is a French rapper. And... Um, you know, we, we we thought of this great idea, like if we had these accordions with like a future bass feel, uh, wouldn't it be amazing if we kind of like blended it with the world of trap? And that's where we got this quintessential sound. So uh, here, listen to this. <laughs> So kind of at its core, it's fair to say that the rhythm section is the root. It, it's holding down the song, right? It's uh, it's imperative. We need the ground to stand on. But really, what's giving this its uh, you know, its Christmas decorations or its uh, its its charisma is is really this synth part. Because without it, it's it's it doesn't really stand alone. Here, so I'm going to take out the synth part. I do have a pad here, but it's really serving as a uh, harmonic enrichment. It's not really providing anything melodically per se. Yeah, I would even say that that it sounds cheesy in that context, right? Um, so as soon as you find the right sound, it can really make the difference between something sounding right and and feeling locked in. If you're not getting that 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 feeling with your music, then 
let's work on it. Let's figure out why. Is it your sound sources? Check. Okay. Uh, you know, I spent an afternoon on Splice or on Sounds.com or a buddy of mine, you know, gave me some samples. And I know it's not the samples because I've got some really great stuff. Okay. So if it's not the source samples, is it the chord progression itself? Because if you listen to this chord progression, it's very, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very memorable and interesting. All right. So let me go ahead and play this for you. Check it out. <laughs> All right, and I don't want you to be intimidated. If you remember the last class, we were talking about theory. Hold on, let me just get my guitar here. All right, and so that chord progression, just to kind of diffuse the atom bomb and not make it seem so, so you know, uh, out of the ordinary or, or bigger than life, it's just a simple walk down from C major. So um, the, the song starts on C, and if you want to go back to that chart, maybe I'll bring it up later, hit me up in the comments. But essentially, it's a... And that's it. It's a simple progression, but because the sound source is so money, it works. You believe it. Here, listen to it. You start at the beginning of the progression. So don't don't get you know intimidated by by what these cats are doing. You know, I often tell people to to tell themselves a. Um, a quote, I can produce better than or equal to any producer on YouTube, right? If you start with in the music industry, it may feel a little too far-fetched. But if you just start on the level playing ground, which is YouTube, we're all the same, okay? So I can produce better than or equal to anyone on YouTube. And guess what? I'm on YouTube. So, you know, there's a little bit of encouragement for you. So get it in, guys. Get your reps in. Um, and so then the, the, uh, the, the hook or the chorus changes. It's a different chord progression. If this is the verse. Repeat. Then I go to a very common theme in music, which is to go to what's called the relative minor. If you have a key, we're not going to get into details now. If you want to learn more, go to hfmusicacademy.com. But if you have a key, every key, whether it's major or minor, has a relative key. And so in this case, it's A minor. And so it's pretty simple. It just goes uh, And then that's it. We go back to the top. So I don't want you to get intimidated by this stuff when, when it doesn't have to be intimidating, okay? If you have any questions, uh, hit me up in the chat. This is something you can decipher. This is something that we can decode. This is something that, that is in your power. It, go back to the last session. I literally show chord charts that, that explain every single pop song you've ever heard in your life in the last 100 years. Name a pop song. The weekend, check. He's following that system. Uh, anybody, Travis Scott, check. Um, you know, anything Scott Storch has done, check. Anything Pharrell has done. They're all using the same system. And so it doesn't have to be intimidating, you know, so long as you have the tools. But if you don't know the system, then it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to feel like you're walking in quicksand, right? Because you don't know how to get around. How, how do I take my song to the next level? Well, it's just an emotion. All these chords, they relate to each other. They have a relationship. And so anyway, I'll, I'll get off of that tangent. So um, yeah, the chord progression is pretty basic. Um, I love it. I, I think it works really well with these, this kind of French uh, style that we're working in with, with here. And so now the one thing I'm going to work on is um, flex time. So if you don't have any experience with flex time, uh, listen, please learn it. Use this tool in your arsenal because it's the equivalent of quantizing MIDI. So, you know, in the world of MIDI, it's really easy to move things around, you know, change the position, change the pitch, the velocity. You can do that with audio. It's a very, very strong uh, algorithm inside of Logic. So how do you get there? All right, you hit Command F, and you can see now that kind of the view has changed. And so 
it's not enough to just hit Command F. You also have to enable the track itself. So we're working with Flex Time. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z to open up the track, right? So ju just to kind of allow me to look at it. This is called Track Zoom. Every DAW has it. You don't have to, uh, you know, be a Logic user to to uh, to watch this. Um, you probably will benefit a little bit more in all fairness, but you don't have to be. Uh, you know, every DAW, Ableton, Pro Tools, they all have this stuff. All right. So my main gripe right now is I, I like the part. Take a listen. Okay, so I'm, I'm liking everything. I'm happy about it. Just I feel like the synthesizer, especially here in the verse, it kind of loses its, its, um, its feel. What do I mean by feel? Well, if you've ever heard a drummer named Travis Barker play, you know what feel is. Nobody plays like him because he's got his own take on it, his own feel, right? His own groove. Listen to... Uh, the, the guy who played drums for James Brown, feel. The drummer who played for the Neville brothers, feel. Uh, 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 Carter Buford, I believe that's his name, from Dave Matthews Band, feel. On and on and on. Victor Wooten, who plays bass, feel. All right, so you, I'm going to go ahead and start aligning the audio so that it works a little bit better. You can see that the track looks okay on the surface, but really it's not. You can see things are, are kind of out of alignment. Now, there's a very generic way of doing this, and so we can give that a spin. I make sure everything is in key focus. What does that mean? It just means I select everything. How do I know if, I, if it's selected? It's highlighted. And then after that, I go into quantize, and then I just I hit a quantization value. So if I'm thinking that's quarter notes, so um, but, but this section here doesn't just have quarter notes. It, it also has one and two and three and so that's that would be eighth notes uh let me let me li let you listen to that so you can hear what i'm talking about right here when it gets to bar 21 here take a listen uh why don't i solo this okay. so if i use a quantization value of only quarter notes believe it or not uh it might omit notes. It might take things away. It's not going to feel right because that wasn't the intended performance. Now, that can be a way to create happy accidents. I don't want a happy accident right now, all right? I just want the performance as is. Uh, I just want to bring out the life out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit eighth notes, and you can see that some magic has now been applied. Um, I don't know if it fixed the issue at hand, but I'm taking a look, and it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Let's listen. Uh, I'm going to hit forward slash. This is a great a key command for all my logic users it's called go to position. I can literally hit any bar, hit return, and then it moves the playhead as such. All right, here we go. Yeah, I mean, hey, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be hard. You know, I will never uh, make somebody do work that doesn't need to be done. But if it needs to be done, you better be willing to get the job done. Otherwise, someone's going to take your spot. You think this is not a coveted position, my friends? Please think again. There are perhaps tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that would love to get paid for making music. They would sacrifice anything to get the spot. So if you're currently working in the industry or you're on your way up or you're, you're, you're starting to build something, you're starting to build a name for yourself, do not take the position for granted. Don't get sloppy. Stay in the details. And if you can't keep up with it, either get out of the kitchen or do me a favor, start to get some help. All right? You're more powerful with collaborators. You're more powerful with other people. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and listen here. Everything's feeling good to me uh, in this first section. But we got to check our work. Cross check, right? Here we go. Oh, 
right, let me take a closer look right here. I'm going to click on this region and I'm going to hit Z for zoom to selection. And so now I get a little bit closer here and I get to, you know, my eyes on it and see what, what's going on. It seemed like it kind of collapsed maybe here. Uh, let's listen. Yeah, so something happened here. It didn't sound as natural. Uh, this might be something that we can rectify in a really easy way. I don't know. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Let's see what happens. Yeah, maybe. If it gets to the point where, where I'm unsure or I can't tell, because I repeat this part, I will go to another section and drag this in. But I'm just going to see if I can get it going here. Bear in mind, there will be vocals over this, so this is probably a mute point. But still, still, don't get sloppy. This definitely sounded unnatural. Um, I'm going to remove this, this flex marker. So, you know, I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to see if this sounds natural. I doubt it, but let's see. Yeah. So I actually will use it, but I won't use as much. So um, if, for those of you that know me, I'm an Apple certified T3 trainer for Logic. I'm doing some work for them right now, uh, delivering course materials, doing all sorts of great stuff. But um, I work in snap mode and, and uh, nudge mode in the toolbar uh, exclusively. This is something I do all the time. And the reason that I push this teaching and it's part of my curriculum with all the, the people I work with, with all my students, is simply because if you don't start to um, adopt this, this technology and this, this, this way of working, what ends up happening is you start to make mistake after mistake after mistake. For those of you who've been trying to learn logic for a long time, and maybe you've got a couple years under your belt, and sure, you can record a song, but you feel like, like there's something missing, there's a gap in your understanding. I would love to show you my system. Go, please, please visit hfmusicacademy.com. Check out what we have to offer. And for those of you just looking for a free course to help you, go to udemy.com and check out how to maximize your desktop and laptop CPU performance for your DAW. Currently has 3,500 downloads. It's, uh, it's been an amazing journey just seeing that course take flight. So if you're interested in getting your laptop and your desktop to a point where it's so stable, locked in, performance is there. I haven't had a single problem with this computer for the four or five years that I've had it. I've been locked and loaded working. I've got over 5,000 songs in various music libraries all across the world, uh, jingles, commercials, trailers, TV shows on point. So let me help you out. I just want to be a service. I just want to help the people in my life and I want to, you know, each one teach one, you know, you help somebody out, I'll help somebody out. And then all of us will get better. We'll grow and we'll get our piece of the pie. All right. So I'm rocking and rolling here. Um, I'm just trying to see if, uh, if there's anything else here that needs to be fixed. Yeah. I mean, th this part was okay. I was, I was not as ecstatic about that performance as maybe this one. So let me go ahead and show you what I would do. Um, I take this section here. All right, and I'm literally just going to replace that, all right? So if I go to my drag mode, for those of you who are on Logic, uh, be sure this says no overlap because I'm literally going to replace something right now, okay? And so um, let me see if I'm going to mess up. Uh, now this looks okay. Let's try this out. Might need to align it a little bit better. Okay, wait a minute. So that should be right there, actually, because there's a pause I didn't account for. Let's make sure. Hold on. This is why you need to make sure your editing skills are on point, team. Here we go. Yeah, you see how that sounded a little bit more natural? And so we're looking for the most natural performance. And going back to what George Martin said when we first started the call, nobody has to know. It, it doesn't matter. Everyone is cheating. 
right? Everyone's cheating. So who cares? Just get to work. Make sure you make beautiful music. That's the goal, right? <music> All right, so um, let me see if this performance works, and if not, I'm going to replace that one too. Here we go. That one right there, it kind of came too soon, okay? So um, if you if you have logic, this is a good little lesson here. Um, I don't plan out what the lesson's going to be necessarily. I know things are going to come up, and I just figured, hey, you know, let's just learn together. Let's grow together. And um, if, if, you, if you look at the symbol that's currently on the screen right now, this is a single flex mark indicator. So if I want, I can go ahead and click on the mouse and create a flex point at this at this uh, particular point in the transient. Now notice there's a plus. That means that it's connected to the transient. If I go away, that behavior may change. It looks like it's it's uh yeah, maybe it's alive because there's there's a noise floor. I don't know. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and click right here. All right, and then I'm going to move this over so that this section isn't playing right away. And so this is subtle stuff, I know, but it it's the, the subtle things that are going to allow you to win the big wins. It's the small things, believe it or not, that allow you to triumph. So do not let the small things just go by the wayside. Don't brush them under the rug. Pay attention. Pay attention. This is a game of details. It's a game of inches, as they say. I'm sure you've heard that before. It's a game of inches. <laughs> All right, so same thing here. It's not that big of a deal, but here I can't create um, single flex markers. Oh, uh, there you can. If I move to the bottom, there's this is another behavior. We don't need this. So if you want more info on this, you can watch my Logic 101 course uh, available at hfmusicacademy.com. But for, for now, I'm going to take this single flex marker that's currently on the grid, and I'm just going to move it over a little bit, and let's see if this helps our cause. This one could use the same treatment. I'm just going to move it over uh, ever so slightly. Why isn't it moving? Hold on. No. All right. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Hold on. This one. Why, what's so, why is this fixated here? Let's see if I can move this over. Nope. Nope. Hold on. This one seems to be fixed. Why? All right. Let me move this one over then. Hopefully this works. Okay, let's see what happens here. So for those of you that do work in flex time, do me a favor. Once you make these, these big changes, bounce to audio because this, this flex algorithm, it takes so much CPU. And so rather than hampering your system, I'm just going to go ahead and bounce this to audio. All right. So the next thing that we'll get into um, is we're going to hit a couple of uh, guitars. And so I'm just going to dub some guitars. It's just something I thought about. It's really not that big of a deal. I've got a mic set up right here. This is the Mojave MA200, if you guys have heard of it. Uh, good for acoustic guitar uh, performances. Good for uh, certain vocalists that have uh, darker voices, rounder voices. Um, so I'm going to use that to record an acoustic guitar. So let's go ahead and get that set up. Um, here, this one here. This is a little inside joke. Hold on. All right. So that being said, let's uh, let's get into recording a guitar. So <clears throat> what do I do? All right. Well, 
if you have an interface, you're going to need one. Otherwise, your guitar is probably not going to sound that great if you use the built-in microphone inside of your laptop. So um, unless you're drafting, then it's cool. But but if you are if you want to start recording something that may be on the record, that may be on the track, uh, go ahead and uh, bring up your preferences. And I'm going to set up my universal audio. So I'm recording directly into Logic. Now, for those of you that have uh, universal audio, you know that you know there's, there's like a, this whole thing with like software monitoring. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and turn turn it off. So I don't want to monitor through logic. I want to monitor through the console. And so on my second screen here, uh, I'm just setting it up just to make sure everything's up and running. I've got the Mojave MA200. It's unmuted. So I'm, I'm currently getting sound, as you can see here. Um, Make sure the input is set properly. When I see beginners and, and, and people who are just getting started, um, I, I watch them work and, and they'll forget small things, you know, the inputs and outputs. Um, they'll forget to set up the input inside of the track itself. So here's the, the Mojave. It's a bunch of small things. Um, they forget to hit record or, you know, uh, they forget about their snap modes. And, you know, two hours later, they've written a track that's completely off the grid and hence, uh, you know, not salvageable. So, all right, uh, guitar looks like it's ready to go. Um, I've already did a little bit of sound checking, so uh, I've got some plugins on it here. I don't know if you guys are going to see this, but uh, I got the API. Uh, good. So that's like a little preamp there and EQ. Here's a compressor and then just a little bit of tape just for some realism. So I'm just going to go through one uh, take overall. And then from there, I'm sure I'll find what it is I need to find. So um, I'm going to take off these real quick. If you have any questions, hit me in the chat, and we're going to record the guitars uh, live. So here we go. Check one. Okay, so 
after that, depending on your setup, mute the necessary console, go ahead and turn off any inputs so you don't cause any feedback. The last thing you want to do is damage your ears or get a, a feedback loop. And uh, so just turn everything off. That's kind of protocol. If you're going to record something, yeah, surely go ahead, turn everything on, make sure you're ready to go. So let's go ahead and check this out. And we're literally going to use the same tech, flex time. Okay. We're going to use the same, <laughs> Angelina, what's up? Um, we're going to use the same tech. All right. So um, one and two and three and four. And so theoretically one knee and a two. So we'll try out 16th notes. We'll see how that works. Uh, sometimes, honestly, I, I'm not even trying to decipher what is it, you know, I'm just trying to create something that sounds interesting. So we'll go here. Uh, this is a pretty simple part in general. So this should be a breeze. Let's go with 16th notes. Looks like it lined up pretty nice. Let's check this out. Um, and you know what, let's insert a quick EQ. Uh, let's go here. Let's go at 200, okay. Oh, what's going on? Why don't I hear, oh. All right, let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to separate the guitar parts because they're not going to be treated the same. Um, so let's see. Okay, um, so from there to there. We're going to create another track. So in Logic, if you just double click at the bottom of the track header, you get a duplicate. So I'm just going to drag this down here. Uh, make sure that we're we're doing a technique called changing scenes in a movie. So by the time we get to this part, um, the listener or uh, your fans, they get to experience a shift, right? This is something that that happens naturally to their ears, but but again, they don't know all the work that necessarily goes into it. And that's okay. They're not supposed to. Um, so that sounds good. I uh, pretty much botched the rest of this performance. Uh, I think I got it together somewhere over here. Let me see. Yeah, I started playing um, every single chord change and I didn't like that as much as this. But to be honest, I have everything I need. Let me just hear the ending. Um. So that may be something I keep, I don't know. It, it, a lot of it depends on the artist. So there's that that needs to be considered. Um, so yeah, this acoustic sounds pretty good. Um, it could also just be a percussive element. Remember that an acoustic guitar oftentimes is really just a, a percussive element. It's like a shaker or something. You know, you're not necessarily hearing the tone. That should be checked out. So, of course, you would still have to go through this with a fine tooth comb, regardless of quantization value. All right, so there's something right there. Usually what I do to fix this is I'll get rid of or move this over to the right. See what happens. That's an interesting sound. Uh, let's move this this way. move this to the oops let's see let's change the snap and so now I'm moving every single one of these transits and trying to line this up so it sounds natural that sounds okay but there's like a weird stutter, stutter effect here let's see 
may not be hmm let's see yeah that's dangerous territory uh i'll try moving this one more time if not i'm gonna get it from the second half ah okay let's get the intro All right, so you see what we're doing here, right? This is why you play it out. And ideally, you know, you should do a couple more takes, but just kind of want to show you guys what it looks like. Here we go. I could have also gotten that part. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just check some. Okay, so that happened there. So let's try and fix that. All right, hopefully this is an easy one. Let's see what happens here. Questionable, uh, maybe here, let's try it. Nah, nah, hold on, hold on. This looks like it should be here. Okay, let's keep going, hold on, hold on. Okay, geez. All right, so yeah, it's definitely, it's not for the meek. Um, for somebody that, hold on, let me just move this in the right place. All right. It takes patience. That, that, that's just the bottom line. And, um, and, and also more takes too. That's not a bad idea. I'm um, just kind of running with it. Here we go. Okay, let's make sure that transition works going from this part to the next. Here we go. All right, and I may bring this over so it just, you know, has a more natural feel to it, something like that. All right, so here's where I'm going to add some kind of effect, change it up, make it sound a little different. Why don't we go with, um, remember, these were already recorded with EQ and compression and such. So I'm just going to add some chorus. Let's try uh, a little bit. Uh, let's try Native Instruments, see how that goes. All right, cool. We'll take it. And, and this is really just to kind of brighten up the chorus, make it sound a little bit more magical, majestic, just to give it a little bit more flavor. Um, and then I might throw in some delay as well. So we'll see how that goes. Uh oh. Here we go. Beach ball of death. Come on. Should I read another chapter? George Martin? Come on now. This plugin has been buggy for me. Oh, I might have to quit. Might have to abandon ship. We'll see how it goes. If this is it, it's cool. I wanted to move on any anyway. Uh, I wanted to show you a couple of other things. Today's session, like I said, it's going to be a little bit more scattered. All right, yeah, you know what? Let's just move on. So uh, hopefully that gave you some insights into flex time and how to get in there a little bit deeper. So here, let me get out of here. Um, and I want to show you guys a technique that I often use. <laughs> is, that, is that a yeah to George Martin? I'll get in there in a second. I want to show you a, a technique that I use to write music. All right. Um, this is something I did in probably 10, 20 minutes. Uh, if you haven't heard of Serato Studio, I, I really am excited to introduce it to you. Let me go ahead and set this up so everybody can listen. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's do. F okay. Um, let me plug you guys in one sec. All right. So. This is a, a great program for generating ideas, okay? Sometimes you, A, don't have the energy, B, don't have the time, uh, C, you don't have the know-how to, to, to get a, a song done. Could be modern, could be, you know, compositional in nature, like a film score or something like that. And sometimes you'll need tools. 
th th there are tools in the market that can really assist you and really help you move forward. So look, I, I want to show you this thing I made. I'm telling you, you made it in a couple of minutes. Quite amazing. So let me just play it out for you and then, then we'll talk about it. All right, so as I've mentioned, uh, over at hfmusicacademy.com, we're, we're doing this challenge where essentially we're trying to get people to write as much music as they possibly can. This is music that's inside of you already. This is music that's dying to come out. But again, people have been busy, distracted, uh, uh, you know, pushed down, suppressed, and we're trying to get people to tap into their creativity again. And so we've offered this challenge. It doesn't matter where you submit it to. That's not even the point. The point is that you get after it and you claim your space in the music world, in the music industry. I don't know. You may be a film game composer. That may be your thing. That's great. I salute you. You may be somebody that makes music on Fiverr and you make $200,000 a year. I don't know, nor do I care. My job what I feel called to do, my mission is to help individuals, what I like to call the modern creative be liberated once and for all, technically, right? Musically, mentally, and so on. So let's get into this track real quick. I just want to show you how I made it. Uh, it, it, was e it was as easy as just like tic-tac-toe. I was literally just inputting notes. Uh, you know, it's a very easy workflow and I was able to make this beat. Check it out. And if you're somebody that needs help with making beats, they also offer these great sound packs like where, you know, you can, I don't know, let's try something that's hip hop, you know, so now it populates based on uh, more of a, a hip hop genre. They've got EDM and all sorts of great stuff. So let's listen to this beat. All right, and so on. And the greatest part is that you're sampling all of this here on the left-hand side. And so Serato Studio is wicked, guys. Here, let's say, okay, you see this uh, this 808. Let's say you 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 didn't um, you don't want it to attack so hard. Well, I can play with the AR, the attack and release here. So I'm going to shave off just the initial attack. And now it becomes this kind of bass part, right? Okay, well, what if you wanted it to release longer? You can also affect the release time depending on the sample, of course. I could make it shorter, I'll tell you that. Check this out. Oh, it's too short. What if you didn't want the bass at the end of the kick? And you just want to, you know, maybe it's muddying up the waters, right? It's muddying up your mix. So here, now we just get the initial slap, right? Ah. Ah. So great way to get that going. All right. So that was the B. Let me see if I can undo this going. I want to go back. Uh, now nah, it looks like it's going to stay. Well, maybe, let's see, maybe, maybe. All right, here we go, here we go. All right, so then um, check this part out. Now you can take various um, audio samples. Let me play you a couple. Right? So you can call this modern day crate digging. In the 70s, 80s, they used to go to the record shops, and and I, and from what I remember in sampling, there they they would have this kind of unspoken rule that if the cover of the record was hip, if it was interesting, if it was dynamic, that was the secret to knowing if it was a great record. And of course, you can look at all the various Beatles covers, and you know that that's that that unspoken truth or unspoken law is truth. So um, I picked this one here. Okay, and then if I go through the progression, let me find it. So 
it's a very different way of thinking about music. It's a very interesting way of, of being able to generate ideas. Now, I wouldn't keep, stay in the DAW the whole time, personally. Um, I, I would just use it as a way to kind of get things going. Like, I love this, this riff. This is something I'm so in love with. And you better believe I'm going to make a song out of it now. And so then the, the, the one thing that I should say about this before we move on, because I do want to do some mixing, I'm just showing you some composition techniques here that I like to implement from time to time. Is that this DW is particularly uh, lenient and um, it, what's sort of I'm looking for? It's made for people that don't necessarily understand music theory. It's made for individuals that need help with, you know, uh, understanding what key the song is. Literally, Serato Studio will map out the key for you, and anything that you drag in will conform to not only the project tempo, but to the project key. So if I just drag anything in, it's going to fix it. Now, it's um, I don't know if it fixes the, the, the issue of major to minor. Um, I'll check. I doubt it. Hold on. So basically, I'm going to grab this idea and drag it here, and it becomes a sample. It's hard to tell. It still sounds like it's in D sharp minor to me. Uh, not D sharp minor. It sounds like it's in a minor key to me. But anyway, this this tech will help you it, it line things up a little bit better. If you've if you've been confused with like loops and trying to drag stuff in and it doesn't sound right, um, it's such an incredible and easy to work with DAW. So let me um, take this instrument out and then I showed you the progression that I played. So then on top of that, I just started adding a, a note over that. Um, so then hold on. This is the one downside to the program. Let me, let me play with this. I'm trying to find this one note that's in between the scale, but because Serato Studio conforms to the scale, unfortunately, I'm not able to find the note. I'm trying to do, but because it's in a major key, it's not allowing me, and so I can't break the rules. And so that's, that is the one downside to it, but I do think this is a beginner-friendly DAW. For those of you trying to learn music production and you're just not technically there yet, it's a great way to just, you know, run a, a 5K as opposed to a, a marathon, 26.2 miles, right? Or run a 10K as opposed to a 26.2. Yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to introduce you to that. Um, maybe next session or, or what have you, I'll go ahead and just start drafting something out. But I did think this was useful. I wanted to bring it up uh, for all the creatives out there. So check out Serato Studio. Um, I do think they're having a special like a dollar per month. Uh, it's subscription based. You can also purchase it. Uh, but yeah, really, really cool generator of ideas. It, it, you know, you can treat it as a full out DAW if you want to. Uh, that That's just not my bag. You know, I'm a logic guy, logic for life. And uh, we're we're moving on here. So let me go ahead and close that. And stay tuned for that beat. Um, so long as this 45-day challenge is going on, uh, we're, we're going to be here. We're going to be working. We're going to be laying down the bricks, y'all. Um, so let me go ahead and bring up a mix. And this is how we'll end the session today. Uh, this is something that's, uh, I wouldn't say done, but it's been fleshed out. Um, something I came up with, drafted it pretty quickly inside of Logic. 
Uh, again, we're having a 45-day music challenge. What's the purpose here? We're writing as much music as we can over at hfmusicacademy.com. Why are we doing this? Because this is what we're born to do. You remember back in the days, for some of you, back in the days is now, but do you remember when like dads and 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 human beings used to sit around and just talk? Now everybody's all isolated and they used to do stuff, right? This is what we like to do, right? We don't want to sit around. We don't want to watch sports or what have you. We want to make music. That's what we do. That's that's how we associate. That's how we communicate. <laughs> so if that's something you want to get into, it's your birthright. Get into it. Don't wait. Stop waiting. Just stop. Get into it. It's time. It's affordable. Uh, easier than ever to learn. It's 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 in your grasp, okay? You can do it. All right. Let me go ahead and just set up the buffer size 1024. If you may have remembered low when recording, high when mixing. Right? For latency, low when recording, high when mixing. Let me see if I got anything else for you, Angelina. Because we love it. That's right. All right, let me see some good stories in here i actually uh i've folded a couple of pages because i definitely wanted to talk about them let me see if there's anything that stands out hold on hold on no i'll get to it in a second hold on okay here he's talking about orchestration i don't know if i want to talk about orchestration okay all right, this is this is a good story, okay? This one's this one's about Johann Se Sebastian Bach and it's super pertinent to people who are creatives today. And again, it doesn't matter if you're in the production world, it doesn't matter if you're in the the music licensing world. If you love music and you want to make money, this is very pertinent, okay? Here, check this out. So, uh we're talking about Bach. And if you don't know, if, if, you're, if you're just joining us, this is All You Need Is Ears by George Martin, phenomenal autobiography. And um, essentially, George Martin is is trying to draw up like uh, comparisons between the composers of, of their day and kind of like the, the, the creatives of the 1950s. So here, I'll start reading here. What's more, many classical composers have obviously been popular, popular. Schubert, for instance, wrote pop music in that his songs were sung for the pleasure of ordinary people. So before the time of Schubert, basically music was just a religious, you know, experience. It, it, it was strictly uh, uh, constructed and, and, and isolated for religion and, and kings and things like that, right? Um, even Beethoven wrote for bands and so on. At the same time, one has a certain reverence for them simply because they laid the groundwork of our basic musical culture, right? So you got to pay respect to the people who have brought you here. Thank you to all my great mentors. Thank you to Matt Thorne, my great mentor. I just want to say a quick shout out to Matt Thorne. Thank you for helping me. Uh, thank you to Angie for helping me be here. So grateful. Thank you to all the people at HF Music Academy and to just to, to my wife, to my daughter. Thank you for, for helping me get here. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, but if Bach were alive now, I'm absolutely sure that he'd be working at music in the same way that we do in the business today. Above all, he was a worker and a craftsman, and he didn't enjoy much reverence in his time. So this is a hard worker who, was, who wasn't respected uh, during the time that he was alive. And of course, he's greatly revered and remembered now. But uh, here, this is the part that I wanted to read to you, though. Uh, let me just make sure. Okay. There was no choice but to work hard, running a choir, playing the organ, and constantly writing music for his patron, the Duke of wherever it happened to be at the time. The Duke would say, I need a cantata for Sunday because it's the wife's aunt's birthday. Bach would say, it's going to take me a while to write it, your dukedom. But that never helped. Because the re reply would inevit inevitably be, sorry about that, Johan, but I do need it for that day. And you do want to eat next week, don't you? 
So Bach would go home and think, oh, hell, what am I going to write now? Ah, I know. There was a good little tune in that string quartet I wrote three months back. I can take that out and give it to the Sopranos. He would literally do this, pinching his own material, rearranging it, and then saying to himself, that'll do. He'll never know I wrote it before. And then, of course, uh, he goes on to say that he didn't get caught. And um, for those of you that are, that, are, that are doing your best to make a bunch of music and get on singles and you get on commercials, you can take music from your past. You can, you can pinch your own material. That's not stealing. You're, you're borrowing from your own stuff so you can get ahead. So start to think about music like this. You don't always have to recreate the wheel. This is what, what I'm throwing out there. This is what I'm professing to people is if you know the system, if you know your DAW, if you know how to mix and master, you can be a business juggernaut doing all sorts of stuff, just waving your magic wand, okay? So anyway, get after it. Uh, a great read there. Let's do a little bit of mixing and we will call it a day. So I'll let you hear this. So yeah, uh, you can hear pretty much done. Um, and I'm using the same techniques that, you know, I go to all the time. All right. So um, you can hear this intro is this concept, changing scenes in a movie. I've got this kind of the setup, if you will, right? You set up the joke. And then when you get to the main theme, right, this is the punchline. And then you throw in a little bit of, you know, uh, of an unpredictable uh, bridge or B section, which kind of changes the key and the feel. Not necessary, but that was just a, a decision made by my assistant who drafted out uh, the bass on this when he was in last time around. Robert, what's up? And then, um, yeah, we went back. So it's almost like we climbed a mountain and then we just went back down. So really simple, str strong uh, song structure. Um, I like to think of it as the build and layer str song structure. And then we just ended as in the same exact way. So when you're creating a texture, just think about it. How soft is it? How small is it? Listen to the difference in terms of size between this first section. If you even wanted to make it smaller 
on the master channel or what would be considered the stereo out, you could even reduce the volume a little bit. So before the bass kicks in at bar nine, I'm just gonna reduce the overall volume by 1.5 decibels. This is something you could do with the limiter when you start mastering as well, and that, that might have more of an effect. But still, just for now, maybe this is just a little reminder. Uh, and that's something that we may also do to the end of the song as well, right? If we're gonna go small at the end, let's, let's do that uh, here. Uh, wait, I'm sorry, bar 41, I think that's there. Let me cross check my, one. let's see. Is that, no, that's bar 42, 41 is right there. And the only reason I can tell is because I'm looking at the help tag right there. All right, so then I'll just bring down to 1.5. Okay, again, so now you're starting to influence the song in small ways, and as you know, small bumps in production. Okay, just make it better, you know, every step along the way, just make it a little bit better. All right, so let's listen again. <laughs> Okay, so if we had to describe that, uh, going back to my book over here, Mixing With Your Mind, and the author's name is Michael Stavro. I messed that up earlier during the mixing class at HF Music Academy. Um, so he, he talks about texture a lot, right? And so if we had to describe the texture, this one's very soft. If you want to put a level to it from one to 10, I would call it like a three or something. Listen. <laughs> Right, there's still some hardness because of the snare, but still, it's, it's just not a big sound. But when we get here, let's call this a seven or an eight. Okay, and let me just make this one point because I honestly feel it will help you with your music. So let's think about a movie that you really like or um, a video game, whatever, it doesn't matter. The main character plays a role and you're seeing her face, his face for the most part, okay? And so when I when, when we were mixing this, um, I was sitting here and I was like, well, which role is the bass going to play? And so I was playing with Matic Compressor. You guys know I'm in love with, with Boz Digital Labs right now. I'm on a plug-in fast. It's been pretty tough, I'm not going to lie, but I'm getting through it. Native Instruments just came out with a plug-in today, and I was like just fiending, fiending for the plug-in. But, uh, you know, commitment is a commitment, no matter what. So we stick, we stick true to the word, we stick true to who we are, and we stick uh, with our word. So I was thinking about what role is this going to play, okay? And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to press play, and I'm going to play with a threshold. We're going over compression. So for, for some of you who, who are, are following my work, you know, think about what's happening here. You're setting the threshold so the signal is hitting the compressor and you get to attenuate how deep is it going to be in the mix. Think front to back. Like, is it going to be behind my speakers or is it, go or, you know, if you're wearing headphones behind my head or is it going to be closer to me? All right. And so when I heard it, I was like, this, this has to play a primary role. And I think you'll hear the same thing. I'm going to push it back behind the speakers and then I'll push it up and then we'll talk about it. So that right there, super pivotal. Please, please take notes. Remember this stuff. It has to play a role. And you're the director. You're the, the, the executive producer that put in all the money to make it happen. And you're the one dictating how the show goes. It's all, it's all in your hands. You can do the whole thing. Okay? So you, you, if you play with the threshold, you might be able to hear what I'm talking about. 
I pushed it to the back. Ah, it's too quiet. I let it completely out to the front. Mm, doesn't really feel right. And then I kind of split the difference. But again, it's still playing a primary role and it felt perfect. So this is the stuff that, again, you can't really learn by reading. You have to do it. Um, I, I do think somebody can awaken you and inspire you to hear it. But ultimately, when you're ready, go to the DAW, plug in some drums, plug in a bass line. Here, let me let you listen to this so you can really remember what the line sounds like. Okay, so that's what we're looking for here. I'm happy with the placement, the front to back placement. That works for me. Now, here's the next thing. Don't sleep on this one because I've seen so many newcomers, so many. And this was the case with uh, with my assistant. You know, I, I drafted the song and I said, hey, just go ahead and fill it out for me and then bring it back so I can finish it. The long story short is when he put up these drums and he's uh, he's new to Logic. So, you know, he, it's, it's cool. I, I showed him how to how to work it out. But he did it in such a way where the drums were not in line with the the drummer part in other words the the feel was off and so logic has this amazing feature called groove track that i've been praising and announcing for a long time that allows the transients of the drummer this yellow region right here to perfectly align with whatever track you want it to align with in this case i've got it aligned to the a continuum beat, which is track 62. And now what happens is that these transients, they align in such a way where they complement one another. Here, go ahead and look at my screen. Count of three. Look at what happens to the transients. You ready? One, two, three. All right. You can see that they move. They shift it over. Look, here's before, after, before, after. So this technique is going to allow your drums to lock in in a way that they have never before. If you've wondered how did he get that sound? How did they get that sound? I'm telling you, it's a lot of small things. One of them is groove templates or, or um, the groove track. Every DW is a little bit different. Please find something like this that helps you. I don't know if it's third party, whatever the case may be. You need the parts to fit like a hand and a glove. All right. So look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and solo these drums. And I'm going to solo the what I would call the supplementary part, where we're just adding to what's already existing, um, and the tracks are not locked in the in in the in the in the feel or in the groove right now. So go ahead and listen to this. Okay, now listen to that in the context of the song. I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds a little loose. All right. And as soon as I put that in there, all the transients align. Everything is is right where it needs to be. Listen to this feel. And maybe feel it rather than listen. So that's that bounce. I call that the Timbaland bounce. Your songs will not have it if you do not do this work. So, so go ahead, go to your troubleshooting list, wherever that is. You know, I have mine on my desktop, the little sticky note app, and just write down groove track or groove method, whatever the case may be. You have to find it. It's something you have to find to make this lock in. Okay. All right. So, Angelina, you're talking about the tail end of the song. So let's go ahead and address that real quick. This one is a little bit unorthodox in all fairness. How long do I let the tail uh, drag on? Whatever sounds natural. Whatever feels natural, that, that's what I'll do. Now, most songs I end on the one. Here, I don't think I do that. Let's listen. Hold on. So this sounds a bit more 
like a fade. Um, I don't remember doing this, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I'm working on a couple tracks right now. Sometimes uh, I'll test uh, I'll test my my musical muscles, uh, you know, and I'll just do like three or four songs at one time. Uh, but here, let's listen to this. Okay, so we should end on a one. Good call. The, the fade did okay, but you know, for licensing, it's probably not the best bet. If they wanted to fade it, they could fade it, right? So why don't I end? Okay, so this is a, a little secret for you. So you're making the time, so let me make it worth it. So I'm just chopping off or selecting with the marquee tool the beginning of the phrase. I'm just going to drag that over, okay? And then we'll apply some pretty hard fades, right? Because I'm manufacturing an ending. Uh, let me see what this sounds like, and then we will continue on. Yeah, so that sounds pretty good. Um, ideally, you want some type of uh, like a, a note, a, a tonic kind of rooting us back. Um, but this song is a little strange, so hold on. Yeah, yeah, so actually this one here should work. Hold on. That, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one. And I'm going to raise up the volume because I need this to stand out as um, I need to uh, inform the audience or, or the listener, hey, we're out of here. Thank you for coming, right? So here, check this out. It's very satisfying. Think of like your favorite meal. Um, you don't want too much of it or too little of it. You just want the right amount. So in the same way, if you do these small things, it can really make a difference. Now, uh, a quick tip is add a lot of reverb to it. All right, so look, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the, the reverb that I have, but I'm going to go ahead and raise up the decay. So I had it at 360 before. I'm going to go up to 10. I'm just going to bounce this one individual region. And then now it sounds like this. Let me go back to 360 here, 3.6. All right, check this out. Okay, now obviously we don't need that much, but now it sounds a little bit more dramatic. And I'll go hard fade, listen. Um, another potential option is to duplicate that and go down an octave. I don't know if it's gonna work, but let's just try it. Yeah. Um, I would go super, uh, mo I would go mono and then just very light. Like there's no need for it to stand out. Just to give it a little bit of, a, a, you know, of an undercurrent sound. Yeah, something like that. So I hope that helps. Yeah, um, that that's generally how I do it all the time. If if I have the MIDI and stuff, because these were just a bunch of loops, you can look these up if you want uh, to all my Logic users. Uh, but totally, you know, completely different. Like they're you wouldn't know the the, the loops if you heard them because they've been completely changed up. And um, we added some, you know, a different bass line, and then a, a you know, like I said, a bridge here. So. Um, let me just listen to this bridge and then we'll call it. So as you may have remembered from our mixing class today, the question to ask when you're going to use a compressor is what? What, what do you want to ask? If you're going to use a compressor, you should ask, does it need to be more exciting? All right. So in my opinion, this one does. So I'm going to go ahead and add a compressor, but I'm not going to add the compressor to the middle. I feel like we have enough middle information, the drums, the bass, there's a sub bass here that uh, you haven't taken into account. Check it out. Right. So that is that should be turned mono too. This is the only section of the song I haven't really worked on. So, um, so let's bring that up. Hold on. Where's my utility? Wait, am I on the wrong? Yeah, here we go. So let's make this sub uh, mono. All right. Cool. And then let me hear how these two are playing. One sec. 
All right, okay, perfect opportunity to sidechain. So even though they're they're in different registers, it would still sound a lot more dynamic if I was to sidechain uh, the sub to the pump. So the way that I like to remember it is the sustained element is the one that's going to duck. So in this case, it's the deep sub. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select a compressor. Let's just do uh, something pretty traditional, the R compressor. Um, let, me, let me do it in stereo here, but then I'm changing it to mono on the next plugin. So this is gonna be mono. And then, yeah, we'll just side chain it straight to the, um, to the pump bass, that's MIDI. So this is gonna be under instrument. Uh, let's see, that's called pump bass. Where are you? Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just change the name here. I'll just say something like that so I can try and locate it. Where are you? There we go. All right, cool. All right, so then um, that is good. Let's bring down the ratio. Same thing that we talked about today. Nothing changes. Um, and we're looking for negative three to five gain reduction. Here we go. All right, so I want this to be pretty aggressive. And so what's happening here, Eddie? Well, in the background, we're hearing this sound right here. And now it's pumping with the main bass. So this is um, not necessarily um, the way you're you're probably used to seeing a side chain. You're probably used to side chaining the bass itself to the kick. Well, now I'm side chaining the bass to the electric bass or the mid bass in order to create clarity. So listen to this, pretty nice. All right, and then, you know what? It never hurts to be extreme. So let's try this out. Okay, I like the sound that I'm getting. I'm gonna show you something real quick that I, I, I've recently discovered. Um, Wicked plugin, really, really nice. It's called Denise Bass XL. And it, it it brings out the, the the harmonics of a bass like I've never heard before. Uh, these these plugins are so uh, just just competitive and 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 uh, noteworthy. The price is right. Uh, check them out, Denise Audio. But here, listen to the one. Uh, here, let me play it for you. This one. All right. And the only thing I'm going to do, without necessarily kind of knowing what I'm doing, is I'm just going to go up here in the frequency spectrum and I'm going to lift up the. The, the mix. And so you're going to hear the harmonics really come up a little bit. Okay. Check out, um, listen for texture. How bright is it or how bright is it going to get right now? Check it out. See, that's boring, right? We need more character. Listen. All right. Now check this out. Here we go. Kind of what I'm going for. I'm, maybe I'm going to hit the drive a little bit harder. Let's see what this sounds like. All right, so that's one rendition of it. A very similar process. So what are we doing right now? We're, we're accentuating the higher frequencies in the bass. Why are we doing it? Because it sounds great. So this is called Knorr, K-N-O-R-R -R by Clevgrand. Uh, I brought out a couple of their plugins. I really like their work. Um, so um, let's listen to the bass again. So here's before.
Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Here we go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. So we were we were basically taking the overtones or the harmonics of the bass and we were extracting information or we were exciting it to make it sound uh, better. Right. Sometimes it's not enough to, to compress it. You, you need another tactic. So using an exciter like this uh, can really bring out the harmonics. There's another great one as well by um, called our bass by waves. Uh, check that one out. But uh, that's the one that works for me right now. Let me take one final listen and then we will call it. session i am learning so much hanging out with you guys so i appreciate it uh hey let's uh let's do this again every monday and wednesday 6 p.m in the mix with eddie gray guys keep pushing keep pushing it's possible it's possible for a guy like me took it all the way up to the mountaintop you can do it you can do it. it's pretty simple all right um just get your reps in stay consistent Stay true to your word. If you say you're going to do it, do it. Do it. No more games. No more games. All right, I'm signing off. Have yourself a blessed night. May you sleep with the angels. And let's wake up tomorrow and let's crush it. All right, take it easy, guys.